She served as President Clinton's appointee on the Chemical Safety and Hazard Investigation Board. She was also a senior advisor to the Assistant Secretary for Health in the Department of Health and Human Services in the United States, and as such has counseled many leading officials in the United States, United Nations, World Bank, European Environmental Agency, the Pan American Health Organization, and the World Bank. How many of you have an iPhone? You got to legal? All right. Now click on RF exposure. Now you can read it later, but it's basically telling you that you need to know don't keep the phone in your pocket or you will exceed the as tested exposure guidelines. Now, how many of you knew that before today? Because they actually are now giving people this information. Telstra is telling you to use a hands free device to keep a mobile phone away from the head and body because mobile phones and Wi-Fi devices emit pulsed microwave radiation. 900 times a minute, it's looking to, for a signal. It says to the tower, where are you? Here I am. Where are you? Here I am. It's smart. That's how it's supposed to do. Now, when the phone rings, the worst time for you to put a phone right next to your head is when you answer it and say hello, because it's smart and it goes to max power and bone marrow. And look here at the radiation as it gets into the groin area. And that's just from having a mobile phone modeled into the pocket. The United States magazine Consumer Reports recently recommended that nobody keep a phone in their pocket. Nobody. And in fact, if phones were tested in pockets, they would exceed the as-tested exposure guidelines, which is why Telstra has recently issued that um, advice. iPads and other devices are called tablets because they belong on tables. They are tested 20 centimeters away from that big guy that I showed you before. 20 centimeters away. They are not approved to be held in the laps of little children. The problem we face is that right now, we're in the midst of an experiment on my grandchildren and your children. This is showing you cellular damage that occurred in animals that were prenatally exposed to mobile phone radiation. So these animals basically had significant damage to their liver if they had been exposed prenatally compared to controls. Another group in Turkey has looked at prenatal effects on the brain and the testis. They looked at newborn rats after they had been exposed prenatally and compared those who were exposed to those who were not exposed. And they looked at their brain cells, the, the number of cells, their shape, et cetera, with established methods for testing this. And this article was published in Brain Research, which is a relatively high impact journal. And what they showed was that prenatally exposed newborns have basically fewer cells in the hippocampus. Here's the exposed, missing some cells. And here are the controls, which they're compared with. And what they found was that newborns that had been exposed took three times as long to find their way out of an experimental maze and made twice as many errors. Studies have been done here in Australia at Newcastle by a fellow who's now the pro-chancellor of the university. And these studies have been done taking sperm from healthy men. And one test tube gets exposed to cell phone radiation and one test tube is not exposed to mobile phone radiation. And then the results are evaluated and this is a measure of vitality. We measure how well the sperm swim. This is a measure of mo mobility, motility. This is a measure of mitochondrial DNA damage. They have three times as much damage on their DNA. But taking middle-aged rats, 70-day-old male rats, that's middle age for a rat, and exposing them two hours a day for 45 days to a computer-generated mobile phone signal. And those results show lower testosterone, which is a very important hormone for a male. Men and women both have testosterone. Men just need a lot more of it. And also increases of DNA damage as measured by certain enzymes. And the, and the offspring had lower fertility. Has anyone seen a woman put a cell phone in her bra? Hands up, please. Please tell them you've heard now why they shouldn't do that. And here I want to show you our first case report from 2009 and we now have many more. This was a Chinese-American woman, 
a Chinese American woman who used her cell phone four hours a day in her bra for 10 years while she was driving. Now, and you drive with a, with a phone on your body. The phone is smart. It's going to go from one tower to another, and it's going to say, here I am, where are you, here I am. And it's going to be going to max power each time it moves from one cell tower to another. And there it was right next to her chest. And the tumors that developed, developed right under the antenna of the phone. And it was subcutaneous, so it's like right under the surface of the skin. All right? Prenatally exposed mice have hyperactivity as adults. And these are some of the data. They have worse memory. They're more hyperactive. They have more anxiety, but they don't have much fear. The World Health Organization had reviewed all of the evidence and decided that mobile phone radiation was a possible human carcinogen. How many people had heard that? If people started to use phones regularly before age 20, as most of the world is doing now, there was four to eight times more brain cancer after they reached, uh, had passed 10 years. So now, why is there no increase in brain cancer that we can find in the general population today? Because there is not. And after all, if mobile phones really are important, why don't we have an epidemic today? Well, let me tell you why. First of all, brain cancer takes a long time to develop. How do we know that? We know that because when the bombs fell at the end of World War II, there was no increase in brain cancer in the survivors who had been studied. No increase at all. Until 40 years had passed. It took 40 years for an increase in brain cancer to show up in that highly exposed population. In fact, most epidemiologic studies find no increased risk of brain cancer from mobile phone radiation. They don't. <clears throat> Until 10 years of heavy use. And by the way, the way they define a cell phone user in these studies, I'm not making this up, is somebody who makes one call a week for six months. Yes, that's the, that was the, yes. And there's a tremendous amount of sponsored research by people who are hired to do studies to find no effect. And that's plagued this field. In the United States today, the gentleman who is directing the Federal Communications Commission, Tom Wheeler, was for 10 years the executive director of the Cell Phone Telecommunications Industry Association. In 1994, when industry first became aware that there were studies suggesting that mobile phone radiation could damage brain cells of rats, a memo was written to, quote, war hyphen game the science. War game the science. Israel, which is a country that has a lot of important issues to deal with right now, has a national institute on non-ionizing radiation. They say no Wi-Fi in kindergarten, they all prefer wired over wireless in schools. The Canadian Parliamentary Health Committee has urged that there be a recognition that this is a, quote, serious, serious public health issue. Vodafone has to provide a report to the American government, and they report that they face risks because they may have to pay people for health damages. China Mobile, in their report to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, they had to say, we cannot be certain that future studies will not impute a link between electromagnetic fields and adverse health effects. Think about this. That microwave oven, it works because there's a metal box around a microwave signal, and the signal pings all over the place. Next time you get into an elevator or a train for any length of time, Put your phone on airplane mode. Otherwise, that signal is going all over the place, magnifying and coming back. Keep the mobile phone away from you when it's on and you are asleep.